Hi, this is Michael, VK5ZEA from Port Lincoln in South Australia. Uh, I've got another YouTube video for you. Once again, up at the VK5REX V-Star repeater site. And I uh, thought I'd show you what I've up to this last week. Um, all to do with diagnostics and uh, the lack of it with the standard ICOM hardware. Okay, well this is the D-Star repeater with the top off. And uh, one of the things that people have often complained about is it's, it's a very bland thing. There's no diagnostics, there's no service sort of indications, there's no transmit or receive or anything on these repeaters. You don't know what's going on on the inside. Um, and back in October 2008, I came across a website describing and selling a board which replaces the I.O. board, the little board in the back that distributes power and uh, it's got the RJ45 connector on it. And this is made by N5 EBW in the US and it has one addition to the standard factory board and it provides two transistor switched LEDs that are tied to the receive enable and transmit enable lines. And what this gives you is a transmit and receive LED indication. Um, the first step to some diagnostics. And I still, to this day, haven't had the heart to drill holes in the front panel of my repeater. And so they're still on just flying leads here. There's a red and a green LED. And I can show you what happens when I key up. You'll see the green one will light up for receive. And then the red one shows when it's transmitting. I've got my ID31 radio here. And that works really good. Now, almost immediately after installing this board and having these diagnostic LEDs, I noticed a strange thing. I would come up here and the green LED would be flickering or sometimes it would be locked on even when there's not receiving a D-Star signal, even when I know there was no one transmitting or no one in the area using it, it would lock on or flash. And I didn't think anything of it. I keyed up the repeater and confirmed, oh yes, it still works, it still receives and still transmits. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And I didn't think much of it. And uh, one way to, what the, the way I found to cure it was to actually turn the repeater off and on again and that would then fix it. The green LED would be off and it would only light up when it's receiving, as is the case now. And I thought nothing more of this at all. I thought that was just one of these strange things that ICOM does. Now, it wasn't until late last year, late 2011, that I seemed to notice that the repeater was doing some strange things. There were places that I knew I was in a good RF location and the repeater would ignore me. It would, I would key up and nothing would happen. And this quite often would be after a period of inactivity, like overnight. Like the first thing in the morning, I would go to work, I'd hook up my radio to the Yagi antenna at work, aiming at this hill, I'd key up and nothing would happen. I'd key up again and it would work and it would be fine, but it, it, I knew something wasn't right. And every now and then I, I would be checking into a net and I'd check in once, and then I would be called into the net and I'd key up and I'd have an over and when I finished somebody else was talking and, it was, and I checked the log files and I checked the dashboard page and it would appear that the repeater just didn't hear me and I thought this is strange I know I'm in a good location what's going on and it wasn't until a visit maybe two months ago that I came up here and I saw the green LED was flashing and I thought well maybe there's some correlation between the receive enable line, which is of course is a logic level going from the receiver to the D-Star controller to indicate there's a valid signal. And I thought maybe, just maybe, that's confusing the controller into thinking there's noise or it's not a valid signal and it ignores me. And I would power off and power on and then the repeater would work fine. I would have none of these strange little situations where it wouldn't hear me. I thought, well, so what's, uh, I studied the service manual and I really couldn't find anything more about the receiver enable line. Not knowing how the firmware works inside the receiver, it's really hard to follow. Um, the receiver enable line just comes from a pin on one of the CPUs. It just, it, there's no indication of, of what actually makes it, what conditions need to be to make it work. Um, so, uh, 
I thought I need some further diagnostics. And I remember when I was playing around with the service software in the reserve mode that um, you would get extra information, especially when it's the setting software is plugged into the receive side. So this video, long story short, is about what I did, what I have done, to allow me to remotely monitor the receiver a little bit better because I just don't want to sit up here and watch these LEDs 24-7 and find out and, and wait for this situation to happen. So what we'll do is we'll follow and find where the other end of this USB cable is and I'll show you what I've been up to this last week. And we'll go around to the other side of the rack and just sitting here, not installed properly at all, is a WinStar USB server. And what this device does is allows a USB device, in this case the ICOM Receive Radio USB, uh, which is, is a serial over USB adapter, basically. And it allows it to be connected to via a Ethernet cable. You'll see this has got a, uh, an Ethernet cable on this side and a USB connector there. Um, power, 5 volts is just from a, uh, a little plug pack power supply here for now. And this is plugged into the network here at the D-Star repeater site. And if we go over to where my laptop computer is, you can see that um, this is the, uh, like the server software, that the client software which runs on the computer. And it sees the networking server and the device that's plugged into it. And then you can connect to that device and it becomes, it's like as if you've plugged that device directly into this computer, even though it's over a network. And once that's been done, then you can use the setting software and directly connect to the repeater. And I'm sorry that this is a little bit blurry. This camera doesn't have autofocus. So um, I'll try and describe what's going on. At the bottom, when it's in the reserve mode, there is a bar graph that appears on the bottom for signal strength. And indeed, if I key up my radio, you see the bar graph goes up to indicate that it is receiving. Now that's, this is a proper received signal, it's nothing to do with D-Star, I can go to FM mode on my radio and it still keep, it's, you can still see an indication even when I'm transmitting an FM. So it's actually a proper received signal from the receiver. It's not uh, anything to do with the D-Star signal to noise or anything like that. It's, it's a signal strength from the receiver. Now one thing that this reserve mode enables is the adjustment menu which um, allows you to change and modify a lot of the parameters inside the repeater. Now this can be very dangerous. Uh, a lot of these uh, well they're all there's no there's no um, back button there's no going back if you change a value and you don't know what it was it's gone it's lost you can't get it back. Um, so the idea is, is to do a screen capture of this or write it down or something before you start playing but even then without the the adjustment procedure I really don't recommend anyone play with this stuff um, you can really mess up your repeater and indeed especially on the receive side um, there are some values which are set after you input a certain signal level um, uh, especially the well what I've done here is I've, I've, I've expanded the range on the bar graph. Normally there's a S meter adjustment minimum and S meter adjustment full. And what you normally do is input a set level for a minimum signal and it will then read that and set the value and then a full and read that and set the value. What I've done is I've actually set the minimum to be with no signal. So what we have here is just random noise, I suppose the receiver is, is triggering the bar graph. I wanted to expand the range so I could see the see any sort of random noise that was getting into the receiver. Um, this is in, in contrary to how the adjustment procedure is, is states, but I just wanted to do this because I wanted to expand the, the range of this uh, bar graph. Um, and, and that's about it. I mean, there is uh, other interesting things in here as well. You can see um, the voltage is saying 13.66 volts of a temperature inside. The, uh, the receive radio is 28.03 degrees um, Celsius. Um, so this is, this is how the, um, the receive side is set up. And when you plug it into the transmitter, then the bottom items become um, adjustable and there's voltage levels there to change and transmit high and low adjustment uh, settings and the fan control so uh, when the fan will turn on. So there you have it. This is um, how
now I can remotely see my repeater's signal level from home. Now, the only disadvantage with this particular USB server is that it uses universal plug and play, which means it will only work on, a, on, a, on, a, on one subnet. I can't VPN into home, or maybe I can, I'm not sure yet, um, but you have to be on the same subnet. You can't aim this software at a, an IP address, it just it uses universal plug and play. So that's a little bit limiting. There may be other servers out there which do not do that and will allow you to, uh, allow you to connect in from any IP address. Uh, but this one doesn't. And the, and the reason I got hold of this, there's, there's a good story behind this as well. I originally bought this to try and remotely connect to a DB node adapter, a hotspot board over a network. And uh, the timing wasn't quite right, so it was a failure in that regard, but here it's working very well. So now I can sit in the comfort of my office at home, or indeed with a laptop computer, and uh, on the kitchen table, and see the receive signal going into my D-Star repeater remotely without having to be here. Now the next thing to do will be to see if I can tie in uh, a receive signal anomaly with that green LED. So if I see this signal level is indicating a high level of noise on the receiver, I can come up here and see if the green LED is flashing. And if it is, then it needs further investigation. But on its by itself, this is a great diagnostic tool. Um, it's a pity that ICOM didn't include this sort of stuff with their hardware right to begin with to allow people access and to, uh, to see what's going on inside these lovely boxes which um, are very bland on the outside. There's, there's no indication of anything. So there you go. Well, this is Michael, VK5ZEA from Paul Lincoln in South Australia. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you again soon.